Hello. Said hello. Good. Uh, my name's Nick. Okay, introduced yourself. Good. Uh, these are my credentials on the screen. Check. Background. Uh, we're going to listen to Mike the Vegan, self-proclaimed, and his interpretation of an exciting study on stopping and potentially reversing Alzheimer's through a vegan diet. Well, sort of, because I have some things to say on that front. Also, Mike has a master's in public health. Okay, background on the video, done, check. Uh, punch it. Hey, it's Mike here, and today the results are in for a randomized control trial on people with Alzheimer's by Dr. Dean Ornish, and the study itself describes the diet as a whole food vegan diet, as well as some other lifestyle interventions. We'll parse those out. But I've been waiting for this one, and really quickly, this was one of the main reasons that I initially shifted toward a plant-based diet 14 years ago. I was very afraid of Alzheimer's because as a child, I lived with my grandma who had Alzheimer's. Now, this was a lady who was previously not violent all of a sudden was like violent toward me my mom saved me and then she was put in a nursing home so this one hits like pretty close to home nursing or my actual home i certainly respect that i can only imagine what impact that had i think i would have really made some drastic changes in my life too if i saw what a chronic disease like alzheimer's can have so we're going to look at this study we're going to look at the results and look at one little aspect that annoys me a bit as a vegan and we're also going to look at examples of people who have had this cognitive impairment and reverse it to a degree did this help reverse some of the symptoms of alzheimer's yes yes and that is one person that's in the study and one person that is not very interesting stuff. So let's just go. I don't wanna to spend too much time on background before getting to the results, but I feel like we need to cover just the key point here. And that is all the way back into like the early 1900s, Dr. Alzheimer, the one that discovered Alzheimer's disease described atherosclerotic or sort of artery disease changes in the brains of these patients. And yes, I've shown you these images a bunch of times before. You can see the brain artery sections of people with Alzheimer's versus normal people. And yeah, Alzheimer's is clogged brain arteries. I have a whole video on that. So where does diet come in then? Well, we're talking about the cardiovascular system and we have several studies showing improvements in that, whether it's people with heart disease or whatever, and that is likely due to perhaps the lowering of inflammation, but also just the improvement of artery function. And then of course, slowing the progression of the disease, and that is very likely due to the lower saturated fat and cholesterol consumption, which of course results in that lower LDL or bad cholesterol we see in vegans. And high LDL is causally linked to atherosclerosis, the same thing that's happening in these Alzheimer's brains. Of course, there's a bit more going on as well there. Okay, let me jump in here. Uh, I've covered the whole reversing atherosclerosis aspect before, and I'm a little more conservative in my interpretation because it wasn't clear to me exactly what the main factors were. I did mention that across most of the studies that I analyzed, lowering LDL or low density lipoproteins and more accurately ApoB proteins uh, was linked with reversing atherosclerosis. But it could also be inflammation, blood pressure, and other factors all culminating in an improvement in clogged arteries. I agree that LDL is one of the factors to pay attention to based on the current evidence. I'll link my videos dissecting the studies on that topic if you want me to actually go over the mechanisms and the data. All right, getting to the main study, we're talking about this one here, which was published not that long ago before filming, but I have been preparing for this to come out. It's a randomized control trial in the Journal of Alzheimer's Research and Therapy. And this is one that I thought might've even been five years long, like Ornish's previous study on heart disease, because there was a woman interviewed on CNN who had been on this diet for five years. But it turns out that this study is just looking at out to 20 weeks or about five months, really not that long, which I think is kind of cool because if we can see any results at that time frame, then people will be more motivated to make changes and not think they have to do it for five years before seeing anything. Totally true. If there are results in as little as five months, that's really impressive. And they're comparing this whole diet and lifestyle intervention to a control group. That control group is just standard Alzheimer's care. So they're people who are still getting some care. And the number of subjects, they were aiming for 100 initially, but it turns out, you know, they're recruiting during the pandemic and they 
ended up with 50 in the end, but you know, we'll see. They still have statistically significant results in many areas. And a key point here is that these aren't people who have super advanced dementia or Alzheimer's. These are people who have Alzheimer's that has led to mild cognitive impairment or dementia. And in particular, they have to be over a certain score on the mocha scale, which no is not you being rated on how well you drink a mocha latte. It's the Montreal Cognitive Assessment Test for dementia. Not as good tasting. I wish it were the former. Now, there's a lot more details that we can go through a bit later in this video, but I just want to hit on those results right now. Well, first of all, we have this chart, you know, which is one of the stars of the shows here. We're looking at overall clinical dementia rating, which in the control group went up as expected in people with Alzheimer's, but the wild part, that plant-based diet group went down. That means their overall clinical dementia severity was decreasing, which is like blowing my mind. It should blow a lot of people's mind. You know, a lot of people did not think that this was possible. Anyway, we have another chart here, which is the Alzheimer's cognition score, which followed the same trend, but wasn't statistically significant. Okay, allow me to color in some of the details here. Mike's absolutely right about the directionality of the data. If we open it here for ourselves, the vertical axis is the measure of the dementia severity. Higher is worse. The horizontal axis is the time, so zero is baseline, so before being put into the control group or intervention group. And 20 is five months later. The comparison is the 20-week mark of the intervention versus the 20-week mark of the control, with one going up and one going down. It indicates that the effect is driven by both moving in opposite directions. So Mike's spot on. However, he sells the second metric a bit short, actually. He mentions it isn't statistically significant, and he's right, but only conditionally. What do I mean? If we pop open that data, it looks familiar to the last, but it technically doesn't achieve statistical significance, to Mike's point. However, the p-value, which is usually set to 0.05, to indicate statistical significance was 0.05. Three. <laughs> Additionally, upon reanalysis, removing one outlier participant, the analysis indicates a p-value below 0.05. The reason for the exclusion is because the participant was taking the cognitive tests under heightened stress. Either analysis that you choose to use, the one including that participant or not, they're both indicating a benefit in my estimation. Mike might just be being conservative here, which is completely fair. And then we have something called the clinical global impression of change, which I think is just a bad <laughs> name for it. But we're looking at somebody on a Zoom call, like a clinician, judging the dementia rates of these people blindly as much as is possible, the study says, because, you know, someone's going to get on there and if they have mild dementia, they might just be like, and then I had to eat the vegan diet. All the carrots reminded me of my old boyfriend in the 40s. And they're like, oh, crap, I know which one they were. <laughs> <laughs> That's Pretty funny and probably true. And I had to go ahead and just make a chart for this and we can ask what is the number of people that improved in this perceived overall dementia cognitive function score in the control group, the standard Alzheimer's care, zero people did. But then when we're looking at that plant group, we're talking about 10 people improving, which is awesome. And then we can fill in the rest of the chart with different degrees and we can see all the way down to the people who got you know, moderately worse, three of them in the control group and zero in the plant group. Also twice as many people with minimal worsening in the control group than the plant group. So just this picture here is pretty amazing. If you were to look at these two interventions, whether it's standard care or this plant group and lifestyle, we have a group that you would want your loved one who is facing cognitive decline to be in and one that you wouldn't want them to be in. That's the key takeaway here. Yeah, these are striking results. It's not as quantitative, which is a weakness of this assessment, but it is equal across the board considering it's applied to the intervention group and the control group and clearly shows improvement in the plant-based diet plus intervention group. But you may be wondering if the intervention was so good, why were there even people that had some worsening in that plant group? Well, first of all, we have unique cases and causes of dementia. I mean, maybe somebody's lead levels are just through the charts and it doesn't matter what diet you put them on, it's still gonna be getting worse. But then we also just have overall adherence and thankfully they looked at this 
and they did get a pretty clear picture. They say, quote, we found a statistically significant dose response correlation between the degree of lifestyle changes in both groups and changes in most measures of cognition and function testing. So the people that did worse were very much less likely to actually adopt that plant-based diet and other lifestyle changes than the people that did better. Mike brings up two great points. One is one that gets brought up all the time by people who comment on these videos. That is with a small sample size, you can have some people who are disproportionately affected by some confounding variable. So Mike brings up lead, but it could be anything. In this case, with a relatively small sample size, that's a possibility for why some people still worsened. On the other hand, he mentions adherence is a factor. Again, agreed. And then we have some other interesting findings. First of all, we have a pretty significant drop in LDL or bad cholesterol in that vegan diet plus lifestyle group over the control group. It's like a 25% drop. Again, high LDL causally linked to atherosclerosis. So this adds up here completely. And they point to a particular finding that they said might be you know, the best biomarker change they saw. And that was a beta amyloid blood ratio. You know, this is amyloid beta 42 to 40 ratio. As another study says, a low plasma ratio is associated with a high amyloid beta deposition in the brain. And from the Ornish trial in the intervention group, they saw a 6.4% increase in the right direction in that plant group, and then an 8.3% decrease in that control group. Not good for them and highly statistically significant. Let's open that data here. You'll notice Mike's point about LDL right here. We have the control and the intervention at zero weeks and 20 weeks at the top and then the delta or the amount of difference between the two on the right, and then the p-values. Remember, anything below 0.05 indicates there's a high chance of an effect is present. For LDL, both groups started at the same LDL, and by the end of the 20 weeks, only the intervention group experienced a reduction. However, there were some other differences like reduced insulin. Both groups seem to experience a drop, but the intervention group experienced a greater drop. Also, ketones were slightly higher in the intervention group. Let me quick address the AB4240 marker that Mike discusses. It's true that if it increases, that's a good thing. And if it decreases, it's usually a bad thing. AB is a protein, amyloid beta, that can accumulate in the neurons, the brain cells. If it accumulates too much, called proteotoxicity, cell signaling is disrupted. So, like molecules within the cell can't interact and allow the cell to function, and in extreme cases can lead to cell death, meaning that, well, <laughs> you lose neurons. The researchers of this study that Mike and I are going over here mention that rising levels of beta amyloid might indicate removal of beta amyloid from the neurons back into the bloodstream to be removed. That's speculation, however, to be clear. But we do see it increase in blood in the intervention group and reduce in the control group. All right, now I'm gonna to get to my gripe of the study before we get to these amazing anecdotes to match the research. Okay, now we're getting to the part where I have a gripe with Mike's gripe. A lot of griping going around almost sounds like a disease. He's got the gripe. <laughs> well, first of all, we have the diet itself, which yes, is described as a whole food vegan diet. There's no animal products being consumed at all, as well as focusing on whole grains, legumes, and cutting out harmful fats and refined carbohydrates, which is great. But this is where I just face palmed really hard, and that is if you look through their list of supplements, which is quite long, actually. It's like they just threw a lot of stuff that could work at the wall. One of those things is fish oil supplements. I know vegans are like, oh my God, just barely, because we know that you can get the same exact omega-3s from algae. That's where the fish get them. This didn't need to happen. It could have been considered a fully vegan study instead of a vegan diet plus other stuff study. And I was like, why the heck did they do this? I looked to the funding and I will say, this is funded by a ton of great like nonprofit and charitable organizations and you gotta get money together. But then you can see there a little bit further down in the funding, Nordic Naturals, which of course sells these fish oil supplements. So now the study based around an actual vegan diet 
it's thrown in fish oil and it's now going to be used likely by certain companies and stuff to sell fish oil for Alzheimer's, which is, you know, very disappointing, but I, you know, I guess you gotta get money. There's a lot of money that you need to get for these studies. And if there are authors in the study that aren't necessarily ethically vegan, you know, this is what happens. Actually, I lied. There's another part that I'll begin my griping. The affliction hath not afflicted me yet. Mike, brings up some good points. If they wanted the study to be completely vegan, they should have gone with a vegan source of omega-3. So it's 98% vegan. The diet is completely vegan and to the researchers, great credit, uh, they actually prepared and sent all the meals over all 20 weeks to the participants, which makes adherence much better, I'm sure. I love seeing designs like that. Anyway, the diet was vegan, but the supplements were not. Mike's other point about funding, that's another possibility. The researchers included omega-3 fats because their consumption had previously been associated with lower risk of Alzheimer's. But as we'll see, the participants were on some other supplements as well. Now, let the gripe begin. They did quite a few other supplements as well. CoQ10, which is an antioxidant, as well as lion's mane, which I have a whole video on that as well. But this brings us to that sort of annoying situation we see with these type of studies where it's like, what actually caused this? Was it the diet? It likely wasn't the exercise. That was like 30 minutes of walking, which we wouldn't see this type of result with. Was it the meditation that they also added? No, we don't have studies showing that it could be that. Lion's Mane, we've seen some improvements in like one low quality study that I covered in my Lion's Mane video for cognitive impairment. But, you know, diet, in my opinion, is likely the most powerful factor here. I gripe. So, I agree that we're in one of those situations where it's impossible to tease out which factors was the cause and effect factor because the researchers went for an all around lifestyle change as opposed to simply changing one variable like diet. It's entirely possible the vegan diet was the primary contributor, but we don't know that. Additionally, I'd like to add a bit more context to what lifestyle changes actually means because these people did not just go for walks and do some meditation. First, they went for 30 minute walks every day, including three times per week strength training supervised by exercise physiologists. There are a number of studies looking at strength training and improved cognition. I also can't claim this as the reason for cognitive benefit in this study that we've been going over, but we now have two major players, diet and exercise, competing for that number one spot. But it doesn't end there. They underwent regular meditation, as Mike mentioned, as well as joined support groups three times per week. All of this was also supervised by professionals. In those support groups, they received memory exercises, which also have studies backing their effectiveness in bettering Alzheimer's and other dementia outcomes. Some of the studies use the exact same test that we used in our vegan study. Now, we have three heavy hitters as the primary cause of these cognitive improvements, and that's not even to mention omega-3s. So, I would disagree that we can boil this down to diet. It's entirely possible that diet was the primary factor, but it's equally possible the other factors were the primary factor, or it requires a combination. We just don't know. But like Mike said, it's just an opinion. Mike goes on to discuss several anecdotes, including some stories shared by someone who's actually commented on Physionic videos before. Vegan linked, hello. There's not much data to cover for the rest of Mike's video, and I skipped over some small details, like things like uh, telomere length. So if you're interested in seeing it all, I'll have his video linked. That all said, I think Mike did a great job. I don't necessarily agree with the reduced emphasis on some of the other lifestyle factors, but from an application standpoint, who cares? A vegan diet, including omega-3s and some other supplements, meditation, regular exercise, including strength training and cognitive exercises, including socializing, seem to improve Alzheimer's for the majority of people who stick to it. I'd like to see more data to confirm, but this is really promising. If you'd like to have the entire protocol, including all the supplements, I'll post it in my free Physionic community. And otherwise, I gripe a lot more in this video right here. It's a doozy. See ya.